Rolling. Hi guys, we are here at Blue Zone in Munich and I'm very excited that we got a special guest all the way from Zurich in Switzerland. It's the Swiss denim freak himself and we're going to talk about some sides about his personal life and his story that you might not know. So uh, I think this is going to be interesting. Okay, so we know, I mean, you got into denim when you were a kid in the early 70s. Your family got a parcel with a couple of jeans and you had to share them with your brothers. And you were just crazy about denim from that day, really. So you've been collecting thousands and thousands of pieces over the years. And we know that. Okay, let's talk about things that people might not know about you already. Socks in sandals. Yeah. What is up with that? Uh, I grew up with sandals and socks, so uh, I just keep going with this because it's very comfy for me. For skiing, I have ski boots. For climbing or hiking, I have uh, my hiking boots. Or, and when it's raining, I have my uh, sort of rain boots because I'm bicycling every day. And when I'm arriving in the office or so, then I change, switching back to my sandals. I just buy every three, four years one pair. And so you're not, not addicted to specifically one brand that are making the best sandals in your opinion? I don't have uh, any, I just have a denim addictness, but no sandal addictness. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's keep it that way, let's keep it that way. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> then there's the chocolates, because anyone who's met you has received, likely received, uh, a little piece of chocolate. Why do you do that? How do you start with it? The story is I'm probably a little bit crazy about uh, sweet stuff. I don't know why, but I'm eating chocolate every day. You always can get it in big boxes, in one kilo or 1.3 kilo boxes. And so it's the cheapest way and it's one of the best chocolates. It's just from a big warehouse called Negro. I only buy them when they are on sale and it's always 50% down, so it's uh, for nine or 11 Swiss francs, 1.3 kilo. It became also, also a sort of a kind of a business card for yourself. Yeah, it's also for prepping up a little bit my crappy uh, visitor card, which is... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's another office. thing. I just used to greet them to people uh, when I see some raw denim heads or some other people with raw denim or faded, faded items to sensibilize them that they um, shouldn't throw this away because they could donate it to the museum and they have finished with these jeans. The idea is that people put this in their closet or uh, the, the, I mean the cupboard where they have their clothes and then they moving or moving day or getting a grounding a family or whatever and then the girlfriend or the, the wife is telling so we have to clean up now so they're not throwing away the jeans. They think, ah, oh, there's a leaflet, ah, oh, there is a museum to donate the jeans. So that's the idea behind this. Tell me about your job because uh, it took me a couple of years before I understood what this uh, you actually do because the uh, jeans museum that's not your full-time profession. You you have a four days a week. You have a normal job. I'm working 80% as a geographer for the government of Zurich, and uh, I'm uh, work the other 20%. I'm try to keep the jeans museum alive a little bit. What is it you do? Because you told me you map rivers. I'm specialized on geographical information systems, so I'm responsible for the government of Zurich of the 3,600 kilometers of rivers, streams, all the 2,000 lakes, the little ones, uh, about the water management stuff. So I have to check that the data is correct. Uh, so you have to basically check that the, the lakes and the rivers are still where the maps say they are. Yeah, or I have to uh, check that the people who are working on this, they are doing the job right. When it's cold or by skiing, I have two pairs of jeans. Or when it's very, very cold, I have three pairs of jeans, so that's very easy. Or uh, then two denim jackets or three denim jackets. When it's uh, over 4,200 meters, then I change to a proper pants or jacket. You're wearing, I mean, denim that's, that's cotton and that gets wet and gets heavy. Isn't that like super unpractical? For me, it's very comfy because I'm wearing oversized. It's a very big leg room, everything. So, I mean, uh, no big deal for me to climb. I, I was on the Ortler two weeks ago, so it's quite difficult to climb it and we had to swing the leg over a high rock. That was very, no problem at all. It's like a, like a sweat pant or something. That's... When I'm turning 16 years old, the first time we had a little race in the school and then I surprisingly I was uh, winning the whole race number one. I, I never had do, done anything before. Then I think, oh, it's not, not so bad. And then I went starting running a little bit. I always loved the mountains. I was running up hills since I was a little kid. That was always possible to uh, uh, run up 
uh, from 700 to 2,100 meters. But why were you running up and down? I just love it. I don't, I don't know. It's like I wrote in my thickness. I was somehow running a thickness. I just love to, to do some physical sport. Yeah, it's keeping me a little bit younger, I hope. I guess you've worked in the same place for some time, but what do your colleagues think about your jeans and your outfit? All of them know that I'm a little bit weird. <laughs> they just know I'm crazy. They mean, Head, so uh, I made several of those people, uh, how you say this, denim addict, raw denim addict. So, uh, so you converted them into... Yeah, I converted them. Ah. Like a missionary, I told them, uh, that's yeah. a little bit crappy. Switch from H&M to uh, perhaps... So where do you send, you send them to BMC or where do you send them? It depending how much money they have. People on lower charges, I tell them, try to get uh, perhaps an APC or Nudie or Edwin. If I see people on, on higher positions, I can send them to BMC style or DC style or go for some Japanese denim directly. Do any of other of your family members also wear raw denim? Some of them, they know a little bit. Oh, the whole family knows about my raw denim thickness, but uh, they think it's too expensive and it's too stiff, not comfy, so. And how do they think about that you are collecting all those jeans and that there are so many over the years? They are just thinking is, you have a crazy brother, so, but it's nothing special on this. Because our family is very big, I have nine sisters and brothers, so they are just thinking, okay, when we are ten people, there is a risk that you have one crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> Statistically, so not a big deal. <laughs> if you have to pick just one item during all those years. I have had so ten holy grail items in my, I mean the, 40,000 items in the jeans room. I have 800 private items in my living room. Okay, just wait. You have 800 pairs of jeans in your living room. Yeah, in my bedroom. <laughs> okay, okay. But it's just a little private collection. So you're living really, literally within the jeans. But is there one pair or one jacket that has the most beautiful fading or is it just a, another cool story behind it that you there are still uh, some of the holy grails. It's still uh, the, the, do you have seen it, the G Star US Lumber, or the two APC jeans, and there is uh, one Moody and one Edwin jeans. My own uh, Lee Storm Rider jacket, the first one. How many pieces do you have from the Storm Rider jacket? Storm Rider is my top favorite item for, about jackets. I have, I don't know exactly, probably 300. 300 from the same. Jacket style. Exactly the same style. Most of them uh, lay end 60s, early 70s. So you, you, you receive a lot of items worldwide, but you are also buying a lot of stuff. Can you put um, an amount, a total amount, on it? Since uh, 2001, I'm spending 10,000 bucks for the renting the two rooms every year. Then it's about Three to four thousand bucks every year for the visiting the, the fairs, trade show, denim shows, and about seven thousand bucks every year buying jeans. About twenty thousand euros, almost twenty thousand euros every year. So over the last twenty years, you can calculate. So in my life, more than half a million for sure. And in all the days, I bought even more. So it was a, a time period between 1995 and 2005. I was spending almost 2,000 bucks every month for uh, buying jeans. Just Whoa. for a short period, I was buying so more. So we might be looking at close to a million. Yeah, the whole life I'm collecting jeans for 1973. Probably it will be So we can also now. call you, change your name in then a millionaire. Eh? <laughs> yeah, Instead of jeans freak. Just with 14,000 items, but still. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Okay, I think. Uh, That's a good finish. Yeah. Then a millionaire. Then a millionaire. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Uh, learning about some of the details from Rudy's life that I didn't know before. So uh, here is the famous chocolate, for instance, which you will always get when you meet him. So um, nice. Thank you, Rudy. And thank you for watching this video. Uh, stay around for the next one, which will probably end soon. Thank you.